Welcome and thank you for joining us in our online worship with the community of Old St. Paul's Baltimore. Let us pray. Gracious one, reaching our need, overcoming our alienation, give us a spirit of gratitude for the abundance of the earth, the wildness of its creatures, the global threads that bind friend and foreigner. May our thanks be the soil in which a dream of justice grows through Jesus Christ, the Lord of the harvest. Amen. reading from Philippians chapter 2. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death, on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Day by day by day Oh dear Lord three things I pray To see Thee more clearly To love Thee more dearly To follow Thee more nearly Day by day See thee more clearly, to love thee more dearly, follow thee more nearly, day by day, day by day, day by day. Oh dear Lord, three things I pray. See thee more clearly, to love thee more dearly, follow thee more nearly, day by day.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, The first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. I like to tell you a story about my grandfather. He had a company in Chicago that made gunk. Maybe you've heard of gunk. It's a cleaning product for engines. My uh, grandfather was also a faithful Episcopalian. And the story goes that he was in church one Sunday and he was saying the Nicene Creed and it hit him. He needed to hire black people to work at the gunk factory. They had never hired African Americans before. Now, part of the, what makes that story interesting is that this happened during the Nicene Creed, which I don't think is usually ripe for inspiration. <laughs> um, maybe it was some sense that we, all human beings, were created by God and therefore uh, everyone should have the same opportunity. Well, he did indeed hire some African American people to work at the, the factory, and, and they were some of the most loyal and best employees that they had ever had. That is one way to see this story. As my grandfather uh, woke up in a way and he made an action for greater civil rights and opportunity, as, as even a small action as that is, that is a way to see that story. But there's another way to look at that kind of story. And I apologize that as a white person I have been slow to come to awareness of seeing a story like this in, from a different perspective. And that's to look at the story and ask, why did this breakthrough have to happen anyway? Why weren't black people hired all along? It's a story of how generations of African Americans were not given the jobs that they were fully uh, able to do and not able to get the finances and then the education and the homes and all the things that they might have. They were denied that. It's a story of racial injustice and systemic oppression that was all around. Now, does that take away from the breakthrough that my grandfather had? Um, no, I... I genuinely feel that the Holy Spirit of God touched his heart and made him make an action for justice and openness. And that doesn't take away that the whole setting that we can look at is about oppression and denial of people, their ability to fully enter into society because of the color of their skin. People have made a difference in with regard to opposing racism. We have people like John Lewis, who recently died, famous people, and people who are not famous, doing big things and sometimes little things, sacrifices, advocacy, trying to bring equality and civil rights to, for people to have the fullness of what could be allowed for them. People have made a difference, certainly, and we have a long way to go, a very long way to go. And it's not just the past of, 
of slavery and redlining and systemic oppression. It's things going on today about voting rights and prison sentencing and police abuse. We have a long way to go. Well, what does this have to do with the gospel? Well, St. Paul says, for freedom, Christ has set us free. And our faith says that God, through Jesus, wants to touch each of us and bring us freedom, bring freedom to all people. And one of the things that's keeping us from being free is the sin of racism the painful, horrible way that it doesn't allow people to be the fullness of their humanity and the way it keeps other people trapped from seeing others and their preciousness in God's eyes. I recently heard an an African-American Episcopal deacon talking about racism and actions needed, and she said something that really grabbed me. She said one of the actions, one of the most important actions needed right now is awareness and education. That part of what we need to do is help people to learn and grow. And we're talking mostly, yes, we white people to grow in our understanding about how racism is all around. That we can be like fish in the water who don't notice the water because it's so much around us. We're talking about African-American people, certainly. We're also talking about that Asian-American person who doesn't get a job interview because of the spelling of their last name. Or that Arab-American who is hassled and called a terrorist. We have a long way to go. Yes, people have made a difference. And you and I Now it's on us. We can make a difference. As people of faith, we ask for God's grace to help us, to help us have awareness, to help us have commitment, to help us have that desire to put our money and our energy to make a difference in the racial injustice in our world today. For Christ has called each of us to be set free. Please join me in praying to God for the church that we may have strength to carry out Christ's mission of love, for racial justice, equity, and reconciliation in our country, for the healing of divisions among us, for the poor, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison, for those who are living with anxiety, depression, and addiction, for all who are suffering during this COVID-19 pandemic, and especially for those who have lost their jobs, for those who are ill and for the medical workers who are providing care, for those who are stressed by the wildfires raging in the West and for guidance so that we will take action to address global climate change. For those who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God, we give thanks to God for the many blessings in our lives. We ask these prayers in the name of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit, amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you together with all your faithful people 
gather around every altar of your church, and I embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. all those who have continued to give so generously to the ministry of Old St. Paul's in Baltimore. Whether it's been financial giving or making worship videos or coming to Zoom meetings, we want you to know that we are grateful to you and we're so glad that you've continued to stay connected with us during the pandemic. If you are new to our community and you'd like to get more involved, please go to our website You'll find opportunities for prayer and adult forums for learning as well as worship. And feel free to call us. The members of the clergy would love to hear from you as well. And if you would like to give financially, we would really appreciate that. And you'll find on our website a link so that you could give by using your credit card or electronically through your bank. And just know that we're grateful for all the gifts that you bring to our faith community. I look forward to seeing you again. And in the meantime, stay well and be blessed. Let us pray. May Christ, who draws the nations to himself, teach us to love our enemies. May Christ, who enters the waters of baptism, lead us to die to all but love. May Christ, who gives new wine for the world, turn our bitterness into joy. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen.